I'm going to head towards the end. We had the last great emperor of Europe. Uh, and so I'm mostly going to be talking about Emperor Franz Joseph's family. Uh, okay. So, now don't get me wrong. Uh, Emperor Franz Joseph was a very important and powerful individual, yada, yada, yada. But I find almost all of his family members and interactions a little bit more fascinating. So we are going to focus on the family of Emperor Franz Joseph. Okay. Can you give me a when on Franz Joseph? Okay. So he died right around when World War I is starting. Oh, really? Yes. So this is recent. Yes. So this is on, you know, towards the decline of the uh, monarchical era. Okay. 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 And so Franz Joseph. Here we are. Franz Joseph, Austria. Austria is this big power, and that, of course, brings us to Cinco de Mayo. You have already lost me. Really? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cinco de Mayo, ladies and gentlemen, coming up in just a few days or a week or something like that. Be sure to celebrate uh, with your friends from Mexico in this wonderful traditional holiday, Cinco de Mayo, uh, the 5th of May. Okay. Uh, um, do you know what they celebrate on the 5th of May? I found out just recently that it is not Mexican Independence it Day. It is not. That happens, I believe, September 18th is Mexican Independence Day. But I did not find out what it is, only what it isn't. What it is is fascinating. It was a victory of the Mexican army at the Battle of Puebla. They were outnumbered, outgunned, and they won against the French. Um, yep. yep. One, once again... <laughs> you have lost, and this is okay. This is the continent I live on. Yes, we are talking about uh, European royalty in Mexico, uh, and we're we're just going deeper. How do I not know right. this stuff? So we have this great celebration, Cinco de Mayo, celebrating this this, this pucky band of Mexicans triumphing over the French. Okay. Who then the French just retreat to the beach wait for more reinforcements to show up, and then go ahead and conquer the Mexicans anyway. Uh, That's not a great story. <laughs> it's not a great story. But they celebrate that battle so hard uh, because they won before losing. Uh, what I, gets I even feel crazier, like that's a very positive outlook. Yes. I approve. Yes. Celebrate your victories, folks. That is absolutely the takeaway. Uh, I've often said that, or I'm, I wasn't the first one who said it, uh, but whether or not a story has a happy ending, he ending or not mostly depends on when you end the story. Uh, so yes, they end the yeah. story at this courageous and amazing victory at the Battle of Puebla. And then the French came in and... And uh, wrecked everything. And wrecked everything. Uh, now we come to the why. Santa Ana, there, there was a opportunity santa anna the santa anna of the alamo and all that has of died. the movie the mask of zorro yes uh, <laughs> or any number of things he dominated mexican government and military and culture uh partially by being powerful and uh partially just by being crazy like he once had a state funeral for his leg uh, okay. Was, not even the point. Was He's his gone leg... now. Oh, okay. We're, we're not talking Mexican history. I we're going to do that another have time. Questions? <laughs> we should. This is we all should. We new should. to we me. Should absolutely, do Mexican history. Uh, and so there follows a period of time where things are just going really, really bad for Mexico. Okay. Uh, they have an average of a new government every six months or so. Yikes. Okay. And worst of all, this guy, Benito Juarez, uh, who is very liberal, uh, is starting to gain power and is starting to take power away from the traditional elite of Mexico, namely the rich, naturally, mm -hmm. the military, 
and the Catholic Church. Right? These were like the three pillars of power in Mexico. And Benito Juarez starts knocking down the pillars, right? Okay. And to do that, he ends up in quite a bit of debt mm. to European powers and says, I'm not going to pay. And the European powers go, oh, yes, you are. Okay. And so Spain and France and Britain, I believe, all sail over there to make sure that they get that money. Okay. All right. However, they show up and the Spanish and the British figure out France isn't actually there for that. They have bigger plans. And so the British and the Spanish say, never mind, we're out, and they sail back. Because the French were being led at that time by Napoleon the Third. Okay, not not Bonaparte. Not Bonaparte, not the we're, Napoleon. We're after that a ways. And that's exactly how he felt, right? <laughs> not the Napoleon. <laughs> He was Napoleon the Third. Terribly sorry. Did not mean to offend him. Didn't know that he, was a sensitive topic. He it was a very sensitive topic for him. <laughs> he was Napoleon the freaking third. Okay? And everyone compared him to his uncle. The Napoleon. Who was the Napoleon? The, the Napoleon. Okay. Alright, so Napoleon III. Napoleon the Third is the Napoleon's nephew. Okay. Who is the second? I am so glad you asked. Oh, no. <laughs> Napoleon II was never really there. Uh, it jumps straight from one to three? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Oh, boy. Uh, Napoleon I gets defeated. Right? Okay. The, the Napoleon. Right? We don't actually even call him Napoleon I. We just call him Napoleon. Napoleon Bonaparte. Yeah. Waterloo. Yeah. Right? He is defeated right. and he decrees, my son will rule as emperor after me. And the coalition that defeated him goes, um, no, no, he won't. Uh, and that was Napoleon II, was Napoleon's son, who he said would rule after him. And the coalition said, no, he won't. And but he did have a son. He did have a son. So he did exist. He was just never and king. And the decree went out for a whole week and a half, two weeks, that he would be Napoleon II. Oh, sad. But he never ruled, never had any power, but he still holds on to the title Napoleon <laughs> II, even oh. though he was never in power in any conceivable way. Uh, so that was Napoleon II. So glad you asked. Napoleon III! Right? Already the third. Didn't even get to be Napoleon part two. He is already the third, and he is a little bit upset about it. Got an inferiority complex. Really wants to live up to his uncle's name. And his uncle has already sold off all of the French interests in America, known as the Louisiana Purchase. Yes. Right? And yes. so France doesn't really have a game to play in the new world. Right? Mm -hmm. And wouldn't. Because America has instituted the Monroe Doctrine, which mm -hmm. tells all European powers, you stay out of America. We got dibs on messing with everything over here. Right. Okay. But then something happens. Right around this whole time, there's this beautiful opportunity just handed to Napoleon III, and that is... An excuse to invade Mexico. Ah. But you need to be able to do it without interference. Luckily, the Americans were fighting each other. <gasps> it oh. was the Civil War! Oh. Right? The Americans were fighting their own Civil War. They're busy. And Napoleon III says, here's my excuse. I'll get my friends from Europe here on this pretense of going to get money, whatever. But I'm going to install a puppet mm -hmm. uh, person over here to reestablish French interests in the Americas while the Americans are busy killing each other 
France for the win, and everyone will remember Napoleon the Third. Right? Okay. It was ambitious. Uh, but now we have our opportunity. We have our opening, right? Everything's here. Now we just need someone weak. Right? We you mean you mean to rule the country? Yes. Right? You don't want okay. a strong ruler for your puppet, right? You want somebody who is going to be very pliable. Right? And also somebody who has some extra political points wouldn't hurt. And he okay. wants to strengthen the French uh, relations with Austria, which, again, at that time, incredibly powerful. And so they call on Franz Joseph's little brother, Maximilian. Maximilian I have heard of, but we'll yes. get to that later. Okay. Uh, Maximilian the first. Yes, Maximilian I, who had been put in charge of this little place and had generally just been walked over. And Napoleon III sees this, he's like, perfect, right? This is my guy. Uh, and says, hey, how would you like to go be emperor of Mexico? And Maximilian says, not unless... I am elected. That, um, hmm. Idealistic boy. You just hit it perfectly. He is not weak. He is idealistic to quixotic levels. Okay. To a fault to ridiculousness. He is an idealist. I think I like Maximilian the first. I kind of like him too. Everybody liked him. Even when they killed him, they liked him. Sorry, spoilers. <laughs> uh, Dang it. <laughs> uh, so he says, not unless I am elected. And Napoleon's like, or Napoleon the third is like, okay, let me talk to my boys over here and talks to the you know, the wealthy, the military, the Catholics, the ones who are being disenfranchised. Right. Uh, who are the ones kind of welcoming the French over, mm -hmm. right, to reestablish that that strong hand. And they go, uh, an election? Sure. In fact, just had one. Everybody wants Maximilian to come over. And so Perfect. Napoleon III says, good news, election came back. The people of Mexico want you to be their emperor. Congratulations on winning the election. Head on over. Well, that worked out nicely with absolutely no loose ends. I know. And he <laughs> buys it. He <laughs> buys it so hard. He believes oh, that the people of Mexico have reached out for his guidance. And he gets over there and starts doing, in many ways, worse than what Benito Juarez was doing, right? Oh, the rich oh people no. in the military in the church were like, "Sweet, we got you know European royalty over here, you know, give us back all our stuff." And he's like, "No, it belongs to the people." Oh no! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! He quickly alienates all of his allies. Uh, reaches out to Benito Juarez, invites him to come and be prime minister, no. right? And continue. Benito Juarez, by the way, declines. He just doesn't want a foreign <laughs> anything. But he is just so okay. open and friendly and learns Spanish and walks among the people, talking to them and just generally being the nicest guy in the world. Uh and yeah, just trying to create this Mexican utopia for all the people who voted him in. Right? Oh, Max. Oh, you cinnamon roll. Oh, he was. He really was. And, uh, oh. But then bad things happen. I'm shocked. Or rather good things happen that are bad for Max. Okay. The American Civil War ends. <laughs> You're right. That's awful. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> pretty bad for Max. And sure enough, they look around and go, uh, France, what you doing? 
And they send down 50,000 troops to stand at the border. And according to one uh, source, lose massive amounts of supplies over the border to Benito's boys. Uh-huh. Right? And the French decide this was not going well to begin with. This was not a puppet. This was some star-eyed boy here to build a utopia, some democracy or some. And you know what? We're out. Okay? Max, pack it up. We're leaving. Let's go back to Europe. Uh, Max isn't and leaving, is he? He's not leaving. His people need him, Mike. They voted him in. He has a duty to his people. And so he remains behind as all the French soldiers and their support leave. Um, his wife, Carlotta, who is just as idealistic, okay, she also urges him never to give up. We must save our people. Okay, and she goes to Europe to rally support for him. Okay, try to convince uh, the royalty of Europe to go and support her dear Emperor Max. Um, oh boy, I um, this is awful for me because I actually already <laughs> knew about Carlotta, but did not know all of this backstory. Yeah, Carlotta is one of the characters that pops up in my research as a mad woman yeah she loses her who mind has in lost the everything yeah she actually goes straight up crazy um yeah suffers a mental breakdown uh never recovers um her husband hears about this wants to rejoin her but decides his duty to his people is just more important right as benito and his boys uh, surround his palace. Uh, his own officers betray him and open up the door. Uh, he is captured in prison and pretty much shown the open door like, Hey, buddy, we, we all like you. We just can't have you here. So, you, you know, should go. We'll, we'll turn our back. Hope he doesn't escape and turn their back. He, he doesn't leave. He is just too idealistic he is going to stay for his people he is going to stay and die as an emperor he is just too idealistic for this world uh when he absolutely refuses to escape uh and abandon his friends who have already betrayed him uh Dang it. <laughs> he is finally <laughs> sentenced to death uh walks out and there's just a couple of quotes that i love he says uh, they, they lead him out. He says, what a glorious day. I had always hoped to die on such a day. Uh, and then they line him up and he says in, according to some sources, flawless Spanish, I forgive everyone. And I ask everyone to forgive me. May my blood, which is about to be shed be for the good of the country. Viva Mexico. Viva la independencia. Long live Mexico, long live the independence. And they shoot him. And so ends, again, we're, we're going to go by Franz Joseph's family, but there went his uh, little brother. Carlotta survives him by 40 years. I do want to throw in just the last three words, right? After the speech is done, he shakes hands with his executioners gives each of them a coin. Uh, then, because he doesn't want his face disfigured when his mother sees him, he walks back to the wall, points at his heart, and says, Muchachos, aim well. Yeah. Max was kind of awesome. He was, he was a uh, little bit great, actually. He, he was a little bit great. But he was also Damn. a yeah, foreign ruler imposed on people and still remains this kind of symbol of colonialism, which is just so sad because that's not what he wanted. He wanted to serve the people who had, who had elected him to be there. <laughs> and he was not going to abandon them no matter what. And it's just... Uh, Dang it. 
anyway, so yes, that was the younger brother of Emperor Franz Joseph. Uh, okay. 